Hi, my name is Exi Medici. Uh, I'm the author of this work, Behind Me and Around. I live and work in Canberra. Um, I work in numerous uh, media, uh, in photography, or photo based work, in tattooing, in painting, um, and I used to work in uh, installation and various other forms, but I've kind of concentrated things down to the most simple methodology of getting forward an idea. The work at the fair is very unattractive. Um, it primarily bases, I have based a lot of the ideas in this work on my travelling in Iran, the, Irani, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Um, it's very difficult to squash it all into a very small uh, soundbite, but in a way it's almost a protest I would suggest. Um, I've, I've been there three times now, so I, my first trip was 2010, 2009, 2010, 2008. Well, for 20 years I've, I worked with the skull as a, as a form. Um, in the last five or six years, uh, the skull has become so utterly dominant in picture making that I left it behind. Um, it was a bit sad because it's a 20 year engagement and again began in my work in tattooing uh, where it's an iconographic uh, device in tattooing. It's a, you know been used for a hundred years as a tattoo element. Um, and it was my first use of the skull was I'm getting to the helmet. Um, it was really about the meshing of both my work in tattooing and my work for exhibition. So when the popularity of the skull started to rise a few years ago, I, I needed another device to talk about the head. And so the helmet became an, an alternative debate. It still concerns the head, but it's more an exoskeleton of the head, a head protection. But notwithstanding, I've also done work uh, in the Arts in War program at the Australian War Memorial, where they sent me to the Solomon Islands, where we have troops. And the helmet, you know, that work was quite strongly founded by my Arts in War program work as well. I feel I've had to leave the skull behind because it's um, it's been heavily used and, and it's kind of I feel like it's lost its intensity for me. Uh, I still work in it in my personal work, like in work that doesn't go outside um, and develops continue to develop it. But I guess it's a bit like you know when something gets Kmarted, and I feel the skull's been Kmarted. Unfortunately and sadly. Absolutely. It, it discusses aspects of the uh, military industrial complex, which is now really not even industrial, it's a corporate complex. And so the helmet can discuss a whole lot of ideas that the skull is limited, you know, has a limited discussion. It's much more of an analogue mortality, the skull. But the helmet looks much more at the corporatisation of not only of war but of chemistry of because within this particular group they're only gas masks they're not helmets so uh, there is an, a, a night vision goggles behind me which is almost like a helmet scenario to it but I, I think it discusses much more about complicity between companies and grief and manufacturing objects that enable that grief and the profit is taken from it. But notwithstanding, again, the gas mask is a, a horrifying image. I think everyone is scared by gas masks. I, I think it's a universal um, ugliness. And, and there's a lot of ugliness in my work. <laughs> Yes, one has to put, inject a little bit, otherwise, uh, you know, there, there is no hope at all. Add 
one drop to the bucket of critique. I hope that I can add to all the other voices that display dissent.